Welcome, Kay. Thanks for having you sit down with me uh, this afternoon, and thanks for sharing your thoughts. Um, could you start off and just tell me a little bit more about your role at uh, Optum? That would be much appreciated. Sure. Um, I've been with Optum about five years, and I'm a senior, senior director of Solution Architecture. For um, most of my time there, I've been working specifically on our new offering that's an MMIS replacement alternative. So happy to be here. <laughs> Thank you, Kay. So one of the main themes about uh, this uh, conference is, of course, the transition towards uh, modularity. CMS uh, is looking for states to uh, rethink how they approach big technology implementations for Medicaid and, and health and human services programs. In what ways is CMS spurring new thinking? I think CMS is making great progress. They're really leading the way for states. Um, they started the messaging a couple of years ago saying no more Big Bang implementations, but now they're really, I think, giving states the tools that they need to move forward in that. They started with the final rule. I shouldn't say started there, but one of the key items was, mm -hmm. was the final rule. And now they're following up on that with sub-regulatory guidance to really help states get a path forward, which would include you know, a revised um, certification checklist, which has been around uh -huh. for a long time, um, possible pre-certification of vendor modules, which is a huge component to get states comfortable with the solutions that new vendors are bringing into the market. Okay. And then CMS, as they're getting states to think about these modules differently, they're going out and working with the vendor community and trying to draw new market entrants. And so they're doing a huge amount of work, I think, that's really going to pay off. Okay, great. So f from a state's perspective, what is modularity? Uh, why is it significant? And, and what are some of the, you know, the higher level uh, themes that uh, states should be keeping in mind when it comes to m modularity? So I think modularity, a lot of states are struggling with what that really means, and they have to look, take a look at their program objectives, what's important to them. Um, the final rule defined modularity in a, couple, in a couple of ways, or the definition of modularity includes a couple of components, both system modules and a group of business processes with the underlying technology, and that I would call a service module. And so states look at their program objectives, they need to figure out what makes the most sense for their program and what are they capable, what do they need, what can they manage. Um, system implementation, system modules tend to be uh, more of them. Mm -hmm. You might have more of them if you're doing discrete components. Service modules, you're going to focus on business outcomes rather than the technology enablement. And the state may need some of each mm -hmm. or what, there may be some hybrids, but that's you know, the whole possibility is there for them. They just have to figure out what's their priorities, what's their program objectives, and what fits their state. Understood. So breaking that down a little bit, what are some of the criteria uh, states should keep in mind when determining how to modularize for procurements? I think as they take a look at that, you have to look back at the real drivers for CMS implementing modularity. Mm -hmm. Um, one of them is to reduce risk for implementation. But it's not just about that short-term implementation period, it's really about the long-term and being able to have more flexible solutions, you know, a lot of COTS products uh -huh. that have more flexibility so that as your program changes, it'll be more adaptable. But having said that, there may be bigger program changes where you would need to replace a component. Well, historically, if something major happened, mm -hmm. they would have to replace the entire system. So you want to define your modules in such a way that you can meet these objectives of modularity to begin with, which mm -hmm. is being able to manage the risk and implementation time period, getting that, having a module that fits that criteria, having it interoperable with the other modules, and then having it flexible and adaptable for the long term. Okay, great. Now I know uh, Optum has been um, transitioning towards this in a direction for some time, but spe specifically, what, what modules will Optum be bringing to this market? So Optum's been in the market for a while, and a couple of the modules that we've had are Data Warehouse, mm -hmm. and that included a couple of other modules, if you will, um, Program Integrity and Management Administrative Reporting. 
Another component that we've had just through an acquisition last year, we purchased Catamaran, and so now we now have pharmacy benefit management as a module as well that's been in the market for a while. But we also have some new markets entrants, which are very, very exciting. Um, one of them came about because of our relationship and um, role that we had in healthcare.gov. We were one of the vendors in there, and we became the general contractor to see it through the turmoil. And we started working with some states as they were struggling with the exchanges. And we now have an integrated eligibility system offering that kind of ties to the work that we started with the exchanges. And um, so that's very exciting. It's being developed in a very modular fashion, mm -hmm. sharing technology across all of our platforms and tools that we're doing. And then the other new area is the MMIS replacement alternatives. And that has two components to it, really. One is the administrative side of it, which includes claims processing, provider management, and call center services, all the administrative functions needed by the, for the, by the Medicaid program. Uh -huh. And then the other side are clinical services. So it's not just about the um, management of the program, but it's really about making sure that the members get the health care that they need to really help them live healthier lives. Okay. Now, um, in terms of Optum's offering, and you're talking about a blend of technology and, and services, what do you think is really unique about what Optum's doing? Well, there's um, a couple things I'd say are unique. One is the breadth of experience, broad healthcare experience that Optum brings to this industry. Um, we process 2 million claims a year, um, 200 million calls a year. We just have an ex extensive clinical programs, so we have a breadth of experience I think that's unparalleled. But it's also about the way that we're bringing these to the market. It's our services approach. Software as a service has been around for a short period of time now. And business process as a service is the newer version of that. And that's what our solutions bring to the table, the way that we're delivering to the, them to the client. Okay, now sort of flipping that model in terms of how the states perceive and, and would like to adopt these sorts of services, what should they be considering when looking at you know, adopting uh, services and technology in this, uh, in this model? Sure, from a procurement perspective, it's really, it is different to procure services from systems. Um, system RFPs have been long, they've had a lot of system deliverables, long implementation timeline, um, huge RFPs, even <laughs> huger uh, responses, and system procurements can be much simpler. Okay. You would have fewer requirements that are focused on outcomes, the evaluation would be more streamlined, the implementation could be quicker, but then you also need to think about the um, accountability factor, holding vendors accountable to the work that they're doing, setting service level agreements that match the scope of work for the vendor, and then the states also need to think about their skill set, how they can do vendor management based on the number of procurements that they're going to have and what they need to accomplish for their program. Okay, and taking a little bit of a deeper dive, what should states be considering when writing their, their RFPs and you know, uh, including service level agreements um, when considering, again, the, the, this approach? It really is having a good accountability model so that states understand, states, again, as part of their planning process, need to think about um, systems integration. Are they going to do that role? Are they going to have a vendor? They're used to having one primary vendor that was kind of accountable, mm -hmm. and now the state needs to do that vendor management role across a number of vendors and have a way to do that vendor management role, and then making sure, again, that they've got the contract terms in place to hold the vendor, vendor accountable, and that that model and measure of accountability matches the scope of work that's in the RFP. Understood. Okay, thanks for breaking down a lot of these different components of, you know, hopefully you know, what, what it means for states to be successful in this new uh, environment and, of course, some of the opportunities for vendors as well. A, a lot of people who've been in the, the Medicaid world and the MMIS world, per se, will say that this, this conversation's uh, happened before. Um, what do you feel um, in terms of fulfilling the, the, this vision and um, engaging states and, of course, vendors in this new 
uh, ecosystem. What really excites you in terms of you know uh, building on this opportunity? Yeah, I think it is. It is very exciting. There have been some module components around for a while, but it really is different this time. Um, you know, I've been in the vendor space for a long time. And I remember sitting there thinking, if I were a state right now, it would be tough to make a decision. But I think it's a whole new world now. There really is a renewed focus on getting a lot of market entrants out there, representing the entire healthcare industry, broader looking at technology from a broader perspective. And I think there's lots of opportunities. States just need to think about themselves as a cog in the broader healthcare industry, and there'll be all kinds of doors and things that are open to them. Well, thank you. It's great to hear your thoughts. Again, plenty of opportunity over the coming days to hear directly from states their reaction uh, to modularity and you know, how they're going to be tackling some of these challenges. So I look forward to following up with you again uh, towards the end of the program. Yes, me too. Very thank exciting you. week. Thank you. <laughs>